Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And specifically today we're going to talk about The Rock. <laughs> no, not that rock, a different rock. And actually not so much a rock but more a stone. Clever uses of stones or pebbles in Dungeons and Dragons 5e or really any version of Dungeons and Dragons. Although a lot of the comments that I make are very specific to Dungeons and Dragons 5e with regard to spells and some of the game mechanics. So, let's start off with some sort of a quick look at how this all works. First off, uh, small stones and pebbles are free. They don't cost you anything. They can be found on a riverbed or pretty much anywhere with no real trouble, which means they are readily available. There is something that is an adventuring piece of equipment you can find wherever you like. It's not a big problem. Surprisingly, small stones have many different uses in the game of Dungeons & Dragons, or specifically Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Yeah, you don't believe me, I know. Here are a few clever ideas that experienced players use them for. There is a place for the, the humble stone. First, number one. Ammo for that slingshot. You know that sling that you've got that you want to sort of wind up and hurl? You ran out of bullets. When you run out of bullets, the substitute is a small stone. Slip it in there and away you go. Goliath is going down. Right, number two. You can use a stone as an improvised weapon. Throw the stone at enemies as an improvised weapon and uh, down they go. Well, or at least they're going to wind up being bruised, even if you can't polish them off completely. Number three, you can use stones or pebbles to distract guards by tossing a pebble where you want the sentry to investigate, and then you sneak past them. Well, you know this one already. You've seen it in movies. You, you've been using it probably already. Number four, smooth, round, small, round pebbles can be used or passed off as a ball bearing. Literally, the uses for, for the ball bearing are many. I actually did a video completely about around how to use ball bearings in your Dungeons & Dragons game, and I would suggest checking that out at some point. Number five, you can mark a path or trail with coloured pebbles to avoid getting lost when you travel anywhere, uh, particularly a maze, but anywhere. Number six, you can fill a coin pouch or purse with small pebbles to trick those thieves or the thief that might try and steal your money. Your gold coins should be stashed in your boot, otherwise they're going somewhere else. And don't tell me your dungeon master hasn't considered doing that or even tried to do that on some occasions, because they probably have. Number seven is Set up a makeshift alarm system around your campsite by laying a series of lines of pebbles so that when intruders try to come up on you or sneak up on you and attack you or do whatever they're going to do, uh, intruders will kick the stones or move them, making noise and allowing the camp sentry to actually hear what's going on and then of course that sort of helps you get the drop on them rather than them getting the drop on you. So an alarm system. Number eight, you can use a stone, pre preferably a fairly large, heavy one, to smash open a padlock or a treasure chest. Yes, if you don't want to use your weapons, you could use a stone. Number nine, you can jam a door open by placing a stone in the door frame by the hinge. It's important where you put the stone, otherwise if the door is quite heavy, it might shift and you want uh, to jam that door open because we all know some doors should not close on you when you go past them because bad things happen, like traps. Okay, number 10. You can jam a lock closed by inserting a small pebble into it. Now, by putting the small pebble in there, you can't get the key in there, therefore you can't try to unlock it once you've locked it. That allows you to escape. Number 11. Number 11 is my favourite. You can crack open a very hard nut that you want to eat. Monkeys do it all the time. Okay, so it's not 
terribly useful in Dungeons and Dragons, and how often will you really want to crack open a nut? Um, I just put that in there just, just, just to sort of mix things up a little bit. Okay, <laughs> number 12. You can cast the light cantrip on a pebble and then drop it into a pool of water, and this allows you to check the depth of that water and to see the bottom of the pool provided the, the pull is not too deep. If the pull is too deep, then you won't be able to see very much. But you can also use the same trick with any deep hole to allow you to figure out how deep that hole is. Cast the light cantrip on the pebble and drop it down the hole. Okay, number 13 is really simple. Cast the magic stone spell on some pebbles to make them magical projectiles. We always want magical projectiles. It's one of the easiest ways to get access to magic weapons when you can't find them in your game. Number 14. You can create fake gold nuggets or a gold nugget by creating a, I guess, a changing the color of a stone or a pebble. Prestidigitation. Cast prestidigitation on a small stone and change its color to gold. Now it looks like a gold nugget. Um, of course, it doesn't last long, so you need to get uh, that thing passed over very quickly and then get, get right out of there because I'm sure bad things are going to happen straight after. Number 15, you can, you can use really, really sharp pointy stones uh, to slow down your enemy. Uh, they can be acting as a substitute for the cal um, caltrop. We know what a caltrop is. It's a spiky thing. You drop it on the ground, you stand on them, it hurts, slows down movement. Uh, you can do the same thing with very sharp stones particularly if they have bare feet. If they don't have bare feet and they have boots, sharp stones probably won't do very much. Number 16. You can cast animate object on a handful of pebbles or stones and use them to attack your enemies. Kind of like Magneto style. I'm not saying they fly, but at least they can move around. And yes, I guess the, the idea behind this is that they can bludgeon you uh, to death or bludgeon your enemy to death, because that's what we would prefer rather than your own um, body. That would be uh, bad. Okay, so a couple of things that cropped up. There were a bunch of other suggestions that people put out uh, using rope and um, stones to create bowlers. You know what a bowler is. Basically, you swing it around your head, you throw it, it wraps its, round, its way around somebody, and then they're down they go. Uh, you need to have a rock or a stone for a catapult, uh, you can also use a, a piece of stick or a, um, a staff or um, a branch, some rope and a rock and make a flail, <clears throat> sort of a makeshift. Shift. I mean, none of these things are going to be that great, okay? Fair enough. You can also use the rope, um, rope, trip, no, sorry, rope trick spell on a pile of rocks putting it into that extra dimensional space, and then, of course, cancelling the spell and letting all the rocks come out. Now, can I just say that the a lot of these options, particularly with the spells, don't really work. They were thrown out there. I am talking about them, but I don't honestly think that a lot of these options are very useful to you. Um, thermatogy. Somebody said, cast thermatogy on a stone, drop it down a hole so you can check the depth. The only problem is, Thermatogy is instantaneous. It does not last a period of time. It will not keep making a noise, so it doesn't really work that well. Well, And I know somebody also put out, well, what about the, the catapult spell? Put all of your stones into a bag, as long as it doesn't weigh more than the spell requires, which is, I think, about five pounds is the maximum, then you can use it as a buckshot um, catapult. Yeah, okay. Yeah, These are sorts of things that dungeon masters will probably nerf so I'm not going to suggest that you even try these so the last ones are really things that cro cropped up but I wouldn't even bother going anywhere near them if I were you now if you found this video useful fantastic because guess what I have lots of other videos on how to use adventuring gear in your game of Dungeons and Dragons as it happens right through to pretty much every piece of equipment that you can imagine and surprisingly there's quite a few in the series now now if you're not interested in in Dungeons and Dragons adventuring gear and how to use it in your game then I have a bunch of videos for players and dungeon masters you are welcome to go and check out 
If you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this, you can do that by using my Patreon um, page or account. Um, supporting me there, you get access to the written uh, live stream uh, scripts that I have and my notes. You also get access to the live streams much later on and a whole lot of other stuff as well. I also have affiliate links to the book, um, not the book depository, forget about that. I have affiliate links to the Amazon. Amazon still look all good, so you can use that. Um, I have a merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos as well, or just watch my videos, that's fine. And you know the normal YouTube stuff that everybody talks about, the blah, 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 like share, like, subscribe, hit the bell button, all that sort of stuff. Do all that stuff, that's always good as well. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.